Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare is a good, creepy survival horror game. Not great, good. Because unfortunately it's held back by quite a few problems. All in all, I find you very unpleasant. And it's a shame because the game has the potential to be one of the all-time greats of the genre. It's a horror game about two characters who get stuck on an island and wind up having to try and stop an ancient ritual from opening a portal to a shadow realm. You'll probably need this. Do you have your radio? Yes, I have it. You go around creepy locations trying to solve puzzles, all the while fighting or avoiding nightmarish demons. So let's start off with what the game gets almost absolutely right. Horror. They really went all in on the horror here. The island's called Shadow Island, it's a dark and stormy night, it takes place on October 31st, making it one of the few Halloween games, and as well as the occasional jump scare, it has this constant creepy atmosphere. A lot of this comes from the sound design, with screams, <laughs> and eerie, unnerving music to keep you on edge. Unfortunately, a lot of this tension gets cut short though, when you've got these boring, long, slow staircases that you have to go up and down multiple times. You want to know how to make a long flight of stairs better? Like this. And you spend a lot of the time fighting with the controls as you bump into things which you can't really see why you can't get past. The game does look great, even today in 2019. It's got these rich, detailed backgrounds with tons of clever camera shots to keep things interesting. And it often makes you feel like you're being watched. As I said, it's creepy. Unfortunately, the monsters themselves aren't particularly scary. You've got zombies or weird alien things. The problem is with the way that they move. They all just either walk towards you or run towards you. It would have been better if they acted more crazy or erratic, maybe crawling at you or sudden changes in speed, to spice things up a bit and make them more of a threat. As it is, a zombie in a corridor is more of an obstacle in your path, rather than a danger. The main characters aren't really that great. For the most part, they're bland, and their voice acting is just awful. And not in a fun way, not in a so bad it's good way. The dialogue just seems to drag. So our mission is nearly over. Are you sure of that? No, I only said it to bolster our courage. Okay, I admit I did kind of laugh the first time I heard this bit, but other than this, it's bad. It ends up getting to the stage where you roll your eyes every time you hear the radio going on. Straight ahead, straight ahead. Yeah, okay. Straight ahead, straight ahead. Yeah, okay. Straight ahead, straight ahead. Yeah, okay. But how much personality can you expect from someone whose only characteristic is her father's unknown? Or even, he owns a... <laughs> That's it, that's all there is to his character, the fact that he owns a double-barreled gun. It is great how each of them has a very different campaign. Carnby's more about the action, whereas Aline's more about puzzles. You go to different areas, have different bosses. Even the rooms that both characters visit are interacted with differently. Something that may just look like part of the background in one campaign, may be part of a puzzle in the other. When it comes to dealing with the undead, you've got two options. And I advise running away as much as possible. Not only does it save on ammo, it's also usually pretty safe. And speaking of ammo, the game seems like it's giving you tons of it, but it's a bit of a trick, because most of the main guns are either double or even triple barreled, so they take multiple bullets per shot. It chews through ammo as much as it chews through demons. One thing that I really hate in this game is how it's quicker and safer to reload your guns by going through the menu, rather than doing it in-game in real time, which leaves you vulnerable for a second. So, of course, you're going to do it through the menu. But this really breaks the pace of a fight, with you pausing the game whenever you're out of ammo. They should have got rid of this option altogether to make you have to do it in real time, and add tension. Didn't you just love it when games used to say this? It's like you've reached a halfway point, the intro's over, and now you're onto the exciting stuff, the climax. Everything's been building up to this. This is where things are going to get really scary, where it's going to get really good. Disc 2 in this game sucks. It starts off okay, following the standard survival horror formula of a mansion, then the grounds outside the mansion, then a secret lab. But whereas in the first half you had to search this big creepy house for keys, while low on ammo and health and not really being sure where to go or what to do, Disc 2 ends with this linear, straight line area where you basically got infinite health and ammo, and it becomes more like a shooting gallery than a survival horror. The final parts of the game should be harder than the first parts, not easier. 
And all of this mess ends with one of the most anticlimactic scenes I've ever seen. Aline, over here! Everything's about to collapse! Run for it! What the hell was that? Did they not even bother putting music in? This really is a game of two halves. It starts off great, and then ends so badly. Which is a true shame. Still, I recommend Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare. There is some fun to be had, but it's just such a shame. Because it could have been so much better.